What's up guys, Justin here with thesketchupessentials.com back with another SketchUp extension overview video for you. So in today's video, we're gonna check out a suite of tools for creating amazing architectural and structural items inside of your SketchUp models. This set of tools contains tools for creating foundations, walls, trusses, as well as electrical inside of your model. So before we get started, I wanna thank my newest supporters on Patreon. So big thank you to Jawad Hijazi, Rogine Sears, and Tammy Cody. Some of you may have heard of Tammy. She teaches SketchUp for interior design. I'm gonna leave a link to her YouTube channel in the notes down below. Make sure you go check that out. She's got some great videos on there about SketchUp for interior design. So Patreon, as most of you know, is the website where you can support creators that you like on YouTube. One of the perks of being a supporter on Patreon is you get to vote on the extension that I cover every week. So if that's something you're interested in, you wanna vote on the extension I cover every week, um, maybe support the show, make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. So this week we're going to check out the extensions for building modeling from Medik Design. So these extensions have been developed by Nathaniel Wilkerson and are easily some of the most detailed extensions I've used for this kind of modeling inside of SketchUp. So to start off we're going to check out the first tool which is Medik Foundation. So this is actually four different extensions. There's Medik Foundation, Medik Wall, Medik Truss, and Medique Electrical. Basically what these extensions do is they create very detailed models of those different things. So like for example, Medique Foundation has the ability to create like stem walls or slabs on grade or just regular slabs, um, lots of different things like that. So the way it works is fairly simple. You just click on the kind of foundation you'd like to create. You can select different options for things about the foundation. So like for example, the stem wall, you can bring this in using a rectangle, a polygon, or a face. So we'll go ahead and bring in a stem wall with a rectangle for right now. So I'm just gonna click okay, and then all you do is you just set this to draw in the rectangular stem wall that you're gonna bring in. And then you get all of these different options in here. So you can customize just about everything about this. So for example, you can adjust how thick your stem wall is, how tall it is. So like for example, if I wanted this to be 12 inches wide, and then I wanted this to be 36 inches deep, you could adjust that by doing this. And then you can also adjust your footing width. So let's say your footing in this case was something like 36 inches wide um, with a depth of 12 inches thick. You could adjust that using these um, inputs. And so there's a ton of other things you can adjust as well. Um, this extension has uh, more options in it than really any other extension that I'm working with at the moment. Um, so you can be very precise with what you're doing here, but you can see how you can set this so that it can, uh, it'll can it actually model in things like you're reinforcing. Um, if you want it to do that, you can model in your anchor bolts for your walls if you want to. Um, I would say if you're gonna model in your anchor bolts, just be aware that if you're gonna model walls on top of that, you're gonna have to make sure that you actually model them properly. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and leave this as yes for now, but then there's other options in here as well. And then when you click okay, um, depending on what you've selected, you may want to adjust like the amount of rebar that's created or where the anchor bolts are gonna be. Um, you can set like what the spacing is for the anchor bolts and things like that. So, and then once you hit okay, what that's gonna do is that's gonna come in here and that's actually gonna generate this foundation based on the options that you've selected. So you can see how creating this foundation was really easy. And one cool thing about this is um, the function has just been added where not only can you do this as a rectangle, you can also now do this based on a face. So for example, um, where we selected foundation outline before, now you can come down and select the option for face, and then you can mouse over a face, and you can see how you get this little green line. Well, once you click on it, then it's gonna use the perimeter of that face in order to generate this foundation. And I'm gonna go ahead and make these a little less robust than what I had in here before. And we'll go ahead and click okay, we'll bring this in. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna bring this foundation in. And one of the cool things about this is if you come in here and you take a section cut across this face, and I'm gonna go into my styles and turn section fills off, you can see how this actually models in the rebar inside of your wall. So you can adjust this to actually model accurate rebar inside of your walls. And so in addition to being able to create the stem walls, this can also create slab on grades. So what you would do is you would just 
select the area for your slab on grade and then you can set like the depth of the turn down edge that's on the side so this is going to have just more of like a grade beam around the outside and then you can also set this to have like a sub base and a drain pipe so this will put like a sub base under your slab as well as a drain pipe around the perimeter if you select yes on these but if I go ahead and click OK we'll go ahead and leave the reinforcing as is and We'll leave the sub base depth at four inches. You can see how you can adjust all of these different things. And then once you do that, that's gonna bring this in and that's actually gonna model out your slab based on those selections that you'd made. So again, if we took a section cut across this, you can see how that's actually modeling in the wire mesh that goes inside of this, as well as your rebar, and it's also got a thickened piece in here that represents your gravel. So you could create like a front elevation view of this and take it into layout. And you might want to trace over it a little bit um, just to get kind of a face in here where you could apply like a gravel material or something like that. But you can see how this actually gives you a really detailed view of what these foundations could look like. And one cool thing about basically all of the assemblies created in the Medic suite is if you right click on them you can actually go back in and edit this. So like for example let's say that I no longer want my anchor bolts in here I can just come in here and I can just set this where my anchor bolts are now set to no and I can update this and this is going to remove those anchor bolts. So you could also come in here and you could adjust if this has a curb around the perimeter. So if I say yes and I click update that's going to add this curb around that perimeter. So there's a lot of different things you can do even after the fact which I really like about this because you're not just stuck with something once you've created it. Once you have your foundations created, you can use the Medic wall functions to come in here and add things like framed walls. And Medic wall has a ton of different options in here for different things that you can do with this. I'm not gonna cover all of them right now. Um, I'll just cover a couple. But basically what this does is Medic wall creates detailed walls inside of your models. So all you do is you just click on this for draw wall, and then you just click on your corners and that's actually gonna add in a wall based on different presets that you set in here. So for example, I'm gonna take this over to the corner, but you can see how this actually brings in a wall and it models out all of your different framing and you can also set it to add things like your cladding on the exterior of your building. So you can see how this has plywood right here and then this also models in a cladding based on the options we select. And so one really cool thing about this is you can also come in after you've created these walls and you can add things like doors. So like for example, let's say this was gonna be a garage, I can come in here and I can add a garage door. Um, and you can set like the different headers and the way things are uh, framed out. So you can set the number of king studs and head jams and just everything in this is really customizable. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click OK. And you can see how when I mouse over a wall, I actually get a preview of where that door would be inside of this model. So in this case, for example, I'll just mouse over this wall and then click right in the center. And you're gonna notice what that does is this will actually model in an opening inside of your wall assembly. And really, this is pretty much the only extension I'm seeing that does something like this. Um, the old house builder extension used to do something similar. But what this does is this actually adjusts the framing around your opening. So when you add openings with Medic Wall, um, what happens is this actually frames out those openings properly. And so not only can you create things like doors, you can also create things like windows. So you can set like different kinds of window geometry and framing and things like that. So let's say for example that I wanted to add a couple windows on this wall. Well, all I would have to do is just find a location over here and just click and that's automatically gonna add those windows in for me. So for this one, I might. So we'll model in a couple more windows over here and you can see how adding those is really easy. Maybe we'll add a door opening on the back side, just like this. But you can see how I'm not having to come in here and do anything other than just click on the wall in order to do this. And one of the cool things about this is you can actually use the editing tools. So the Medique wall tools right here and you can use this to edit your different openings so you can use this to move your openings around so for example if I was to click on this and then mouse over this door I could actually click here and move my door over 
to right here. And you can see how all of that framing adjusts and moves along with that. So you can also come in here and instead of moving those, if you want to, you can edit the opening like this. So you can use the edit tool in order to change the size of the opening. So let's say I wanted this to be maybe a 30 inch door or something like that. I could adjust that by clicking this update button and you can see how this is gonna get more narrow. So all of these are adjustable after the fact, after they've been placed inside of your model. And so within your walls themselves, um, if I was to right click on here and I was to edit this wall assembly, You can see how all the sheathing and the cladding are adjustable. So like for example, let's say I wanted this to have maybe uh, maybe a red brick on the front side. You can come in here and you can adjust this and you can see how that applies a brick material instead of the material that we had on there before. You can also set if your walls have things like gyp board on the inside. So like let's say you didn't want your framing to show, you can actually set this up to have a gyp board on that back side. So very detailed. Um, you can really adjust just about anything using this extension. So there's also a stair function in here if you wanted to model out a stair. So you could just set this just by selecting a couple points, and obviously the middle of the wall is not where you want this to be, but you can set and create stairs using this extension as well. So, and then you can come in here and you can edit that, and you can set if this has like a plywood material or like a lumber material, um, just a lot of different things you can do with this particular extension. And then once you've got your walls created, you can then use the extension Medique Truss, which is a very detailed truss creation extension, in order Order to add a roof to your building and so the way this one works is pretty simple you just click on draw roof truss and then you pick the kind of truss that you want to create in this case I'm just going to use a common standard truss and what you do is you just set the corners that you want this to be based on so in this situation I would set the corner of my framing here and then here and then you can see how as I move my mouse, this gives me kind of a preview of where that's gonna go. And then I can click here in order to finalize the location of my truss. And what you can do is you can come in here and you can set the type of truss, but then you can also set if there's overhangs and um, different web sizes and just a ton of different things about customizing trusses. But then you can also, if you select your advanced roof options, when you create this, and note that you can set your truss spacing in here as well, um, but if you have your advanced roof options selected, you can also make sure that this adds things like roof and wall sheathing. So you can set if this has like OSB or plywood sheathing on the roof, then you can also add things like sheathing on your gables on the front and back side. And we'll talk more about that in a second, but you can see how you can basically adjust um, really any kind of framing if there's like um, over framing on the end or anything like that as well as different claddings so you can come in here and you can create different kinds of cladding in here um, usually having to do with more roof materials so you can see how there's multiple different roof materials to get installed as a part of this that you can use so I'm just gonna leave this as is and what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and click on submit advanced options and you can also set if this has like a gutter by clicking OK as well so you can see how what this did is this actually came in here and this actually created trusses and a framed roof inside of this model as well as adding sheathing on the top and adding roofing material and so one cool thing about this is you can right click on this and you can edit that assembly so let's say for example that I didn't want cladding on the gable wall on the front, I could just say no and I could update this and this will actually remove that cladding on here. So you could also adjust things like the kind of truss. So let's say for example that you wanted a different kind of truss, you can select from this drop down and you can update this and you can see how that actually comes in here and that updates the way that this framing is brought in. And then I'm going to touch on this last one just a little bit. Um, but. Nathaniel has also come out with an electrical extension, but basically what it does is it allows you to come in here and it kind of works with your wall framing. You can actually come in here and you can add things like wall switches or things like outlets. 
and they align with these walls. So it kind of works together with this um, with the wall framing extension that's in here. But you can add like a panel, for example, and you can adjust this so it's vertical or horizontal. But you can add things like panels in here as well. So I think this one's still in a little bit of development, but it's a it's really the only thing I've seen that allows you to add like electrical devices and things like that. So overall, I struggle a little bit when I try to cover these extensions just because there's so many functions in here that it's hard to kind of pack them into one video. Hopefully this gave you a pretty good overview of what this extension and this suite of extensions is capable of. But um, as always, leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Was this helpful to you? Could you see yourself using this extension? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. Hello. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.